All right, welcome back to CBSN. I am joined here on set by Contessa Brewer and Candida Moss, our papal contributor. Guys, the Pope is here. It was a really an amazing moment to see the pomp and circumstance greeting Pope Francis. And you heard Scott Pelley pointing out that uh, this is a pontiff who prefers things to be simple and humble. Uh, in fact, where he's staying tonight at the Vatican Embassy in Washington, D.C., uh, apparently his accommodations are very simple and straightforward, even though, if, as you might expect for any embassy in Washington, D.C., the main floor where uh, official visits and events would happen is more formal. Yeah, and I never expected to see or say the words bulletproof fiat. I'm assuming that fiat is bulletproof, but the Pope driving off, as Scott Pelley pointed out, in a very small, very simple Fiat 500, which is a tiny little car. Uh, again, just going to this, this, this image that he has, this perception of being a very simple Pope. And, you know, not just for the simplicity of it, but also for the ecological conservation right. of it as well. I mean, here's a Pope who has sent put out um, a, a position paper, essentially, on climate change. And he has been urging world leaders to address climate change and to do something to alter the advance of global warming and, and pollution. And so driving a car that gets far better gas mileage than a limousine would be a pretty significant symbolic step in what he's doing himself to address that. I think that's exactly right. The Catholic Church is a church of symbolism mm. and symbolic action. And the Pope leads by example and knows that people look to him as an example of how they should lead their lives. So if he wears Prada shoes, people won't take poverty seriously. Yeah, and, and this is something that this Pope has done since the very beginning, right, Canada? Were you surprised when uh, Pope Francis first appeared to the public and he was dressed in those very simple robes as opposed to the red and gold ecumenical robes that typically pontiffs appear in when they first uh, win that conclave vote. Yes, when Pope Francis was elected, we hadn't seen anything like it. All right, so let's reintroduce ourselves. I am Vladimir Dutier. I'm joined by Contessa Brewer and Candida Moss, our papal contributor. We're going to go now to Alan Pizzi, who joins us on the phone. He was on that flight with Pope Francis to the United States from Santiago, Cuba. Alan, he, the Pope held a short press conference, uh, some 26 minutes long. He answered seven questions. Give us a gist of that. Yes, he came back uh, shortly after takeoff and stood up in front of us, and he takes questions spontaneously, I might say. There's no pre-arrangements at all. It's just we tell him who's going to ask, and they ask. The first question was about the embargo, and the Pope said he won't with Cuba. He Pope said he won't be mentioning it in Congress. He said, quote, the problem of the embargo is part of the negotiations, and he made note that both President Obama and President Castro of Cuba have, have made that point. The Pope said, quote, my desire is that they end up with a good result, that they reach an accord which satisfies both sides. And he said reaching that kind of accord is in, is in keeping with the church social doctrine, and the church is against embargoes, you know, per se. They don't, they don't like that idea at all. He was also asked about why he didn't meet with any dissidents. And he said, well, I met with quite a few people. Uh, they weren't, and I came, encountered people they weren't, who weren't introduced to me, so I don't know if I, you know, I didn't know they were, if they were dissidents or not. He said he didn't snub anybody that, because um, he said he turned down one-on-one uh, -on -one requests completely blanket and that he uh, he'd even turned down one from the, the president of Argentina who was visiting Cuba. So it was not a question of avoiding the dissidents. He said he just didn't, as far as he knew, um, come in contact with them. It, it was also asked about the fact that he's, he's, he appears to have spoken out very harshly against uh, capitalism and capitalist excess, if you will, but he hasn't quite been so hard on the revolutionaries. And he said, no, no, criticism of capitalism does not make me uh, a leftist. Uh, so that's a misinterpretation. He said everything that he has said is in keeping with church social doctrine. He's not pushing a political agenda there at all, uh, but he's just um, you know, doing what he's supposed to do as Pope, what he believes in. Um, he was also asked about uh, how, why is he coming to the, why did he come to the United States by way of Cuba? He said, well, he had originally thought that he would like to enter the U.S. from Mexico like a migrant. But he said he could not go to Mexico without visiting the, the statue of the Virgin of Guadalupe. And that was uh, because that would be a great insult to Mexicans. And if he added in that stop, logistics would have been almost un undoable. And then he thought, he said, the embargo 
being sort of being dealt with the new accord between Cuba and the United States, he said, I'll go through Cuba, and that's exactly what he did. Um, Somebody asked him, well, you know, what about, did you talk to Fidel Castro about his past um, repression of the church? And he said, no, no, they did that subject didn't come up. They, they talked about the things that interest them both, which one of which is the environment, which he says Fidel Castro is very, very interested in. You know, that's climate change, that mankind's ravishing of the planet. That's very close to the Pope's heart. And uh, it was a funny question was asked. He was asked about, um, do you... Um, how he reacted to a headline that basically said, is the Pope Catholic? And he, he said, laughed, and he said, well, I'll, I'll recite the catechism, the, the, I'll recite the creed if you want me to. And interesting, you were talking earlier, I heard about the, the red shoes, and he said that uh, a cardinal had told him that a very uh, very religious member of, of his congregation had come to him and said, look, you know, is there such a thing as an anti-Pope? And the cardinal said, well, why do you ask that question? And he said, well, I think there is, and I think that Francis is the anti-Pope because he doesn't wear red shoes. So that, that, that caused considerable amusement on the part of, on the part of Pope Francis, who uh, he doesn't believe that he's either the anti-Pope or uh, not, anyway, not, not, a, not a Catholic. Generally, though, he looked pretty good. He rubbed his eyes and forehead a couple of times, looked a little tired, but he's, he's very sprightly, and he grins a lot and laughs, and he warned us that we were in for a lot of hard work because it was going to be a tough uh, three-city tour that he was looking forward to. And uh, we asked him, would he give a reply in English? And he laughed, and he said, it's not my forte. Uh, he said that in Italian. He spoke <laughs> at the press conference in Italian and Spanish, and we understand he's going to do some speeches in English here in the United States. He's been practicing. It is quite possible that he will speak in English at, in Congress. Uh, the U.N. speech will be in Spanish because that's his mother tongue, and it's an official language of the U.N., and the beatification of uh, Junipero Serra, the saint from California, the man who's making a saint, sorry, the canonization, the man who's making a saint from California, that will be uh, in Spanish because he was a Spanish speaker and he's kind of a more Latino saint than anything else. So that's what he's planning to do. Ellen, we're showing right now the video from on board the plane. Um, this is the way the Pope uh, talks to reporters when he's flying to come back to the press area and to talk to correspondents there uh, where those questions are, um, are posed. And certainly he was very candid with the reporters there on board the plane. Thank you so much for doing such a thorough job of recounting the conversation. We appreciate that.